What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. Before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and the player ratings and potentials of players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow all the tips, this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those of you out there who may be new to the game and just need a little bit of advice or for those who are out there, just want to do a few recommendations on what players you could sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year. I have got a massive ulcer today, guys. Very, very sorry about that if I sound a bit different. Anyway, in today's episode of your sign for, guys. Very excited to use the Bluebirds. Cardiff City, one of three Welsh teams available to use. Well, actually four now that Wrexham got added in uh, due to their takeover uh, by the uh, American uh, actors. But... Um, Cardiff City, one of two Welsh teams in a championship, and the Bluebirds from the Cardiff City Stadium in South Wales are an amazing RTG team for something unique in the English Football League. Yep, they and Swansea City both in the championship, and you don't need to go back that far, about 10 years ago, when they were both in the Premier League as well. Yeah, it's been a while since then, but not too long ago, and Cardiff would love to be back in the top flight once again. I'd love to see another Welsh team in the Premier League. It was so fun back in that mini era where both teams were able to either fight for promotion to the Premier League, or were both trying to stay in it. Now, Cardiff City, uh, of course, they're a three and a half star team. Again, a championship side. They're both Budget in the first season is reasonable for a challenger side. It's around £9 million after wage budget oration. And it's not a bad team either. You know, again, a three star team, that's pretty average for the championship. And your objective in the league in the first season is quite reasonable as well. Now, the cup is to reach the last 16. And you'll notice when you do a championship career mode or a league one career mode, your cup objective is practically always reached the last 16. My advice forget it. Scrap it. Don't worry about it, seriously, because as I always say, nine times out of ten, if you get your league objective, the board will keep you on. The cup is a really tough objective. To reach the last 16 as a football league side is a very tough ask. I wouldn't worry about it. In the first season, finish mid-table. That's what you're asked to do. That's what you should be doing, really, with this card of team. Possibly sneaking into the playoffs if you're lucky, but for the most part, finishing mid-table. Last year, the Bluebirds finished, I believe, in 18th place under Steve Morrison, of course. I, I watched Steve Morrison score many goals for my team, Millwall, back in the days. Great team in his first professional management career now at Cardiff City. Hope he has a prosperous career there. He's just signed Marlon Romeo, actually, interestingly enough. But even so, uh, with Cardiff City, you'll see there are several players that deal with the company at the end of the year. They play a 5-2-3 sorry, 5-3-2 system, sorry. And I'll be honest here, team's got to get younger. Yeah, quite a few players in their 30s. Alex Smithies, Aidan Flint, Sean Morrison, uh, Marlon Pack, uh, Bakuna at 29 years old as well. It, it's a team with quite a lot of players who are, you know, good enough for the first season, but beyond, uh, they're going to offer you very little. And of course, because Cardiff City are a RTG, they're a road to glory. They're not a one and done type of career mode. You're looking at around five to seven seasons at the Cardiff City Stadium. Players that are around 70 overall, 30 years old, the likes of Joe Rawls or Morrison, for example. Yeah, in the first season, they could hold down a first team spot, but going forward, what do they offer you? Very, very little. So in my opinion, Cardiff City are aside, they need a major, major rebuild. And I'd get the ball rolling straight away. I'd put all of those players on the transfer list and look to make this side much, much younger for the future. Because again, in season one, you're not asked to win promotion. The likelihood of playing Premier League football in season two for you is slim. It's definitely possible, but the likelihood is you're going to finish mid-table. If not, sneak outside or just inside the playoffs. So ultimately, I would say first season, it's all about laying down the groundwork, selling those old players and bringing in younger talent. So, uh, yeah, we're going to sell Vorks here for 1.4 mil after we sold Isaac Vassell. And as for new signers of Cardiff City, once again, they play a 5-2-3. So, nine wide midfielders or wingers, which means you're going to want two solid wingbacks. Uh, you've got NG, uh, who you'd have as your right wingback in this team. But you will need a new left wingback. You've got a couple of decent youngsters, one of which is on loan. But you'll want someone that's yours with good starting overall and solid potential for the future. And it's a player you can pick up for under the value wage, which is an absolute bargain. From recently relegated Derby County. County, Lee Buchanan. This is a really solid option for a championship RTG wingback. He starts off 68 overall, but he's only 20 years old and he's got 78 potential as well. So he grows 10 ratings with dynamic potential. No reason why the guy can't push 80 or maybe just over, but for the most part, in the first few seasons, he'll be a starting left back. He's got the quality now to be a starter and he's got solid growth as well. So definitely worth picking up. And the fact you can get 
of undervaluation is a bonus. Cardiff again start off a budget around 9 mil. That's not bad for a championship side, but as we know, 9 million pounds in today's modern footballing world doesn't get you very far, does it? So yeah, Buchanan can go straight into the first team. Again, Doffy is a decent young left back, but Buchanan is a little bit better with a little higher potential as well. Um, again, I'd also recommend selling Aiden Flint. I talked about him earlier. You know, decent starting overall in this kind of team. He'd actually be one of your best centre halves, 71 rated, but at 32 years old, he's going to decline straight away. His contract's not coming at the end of the year, so I'd just sell. Cash in straight away, get as much money as you can. And in here, we've got £1.1 million from International from Brazil, which I thought was quite an interesting destination for him to go to. As I always say, signings aren't designed to be realistic. Either are sales as well in this save. But uh, Volks went to spares here for 1.4 mil. Uh, he was 27 year old, 67 rated CM, and Flint went to international again for 1.1 million pounds. And we continued to sell our players. We sold Leandro Bacuna to Anderlet for, I think it was 1.1 mil, or maybe 1.15 mil. Yeah, 1.15 mil to the Belgian side here. Bakuna's a pretty decent squad player, to be fair, at 29 years old. Very versatile, but again, in the final year of his contract, I think it's best to let him go and look for someone better and younger. And also Alex Smithies. Uh, he's actually our highest rated goalkeeper here at 71 rated, but I would still sell in the first season. Why is that? Well, his contract coming at the end of the year and at 31 years old, you're unlikely to going to give him a new one. So I would sell in the first season. Your backup is only a rating lower and a few years younger who with uh, plus three growth to 73. So in the first season, I'd rather start him than Smithies, even though Smithies is a rating higher. But in terms of new signings, again, with Cardiff City, well, I mentioned earlier, it's a three-star team. And there's not a great deal of first team quality and especially young talent as well. If you want a good young core, you need to assemble it yourself. And really, the positions where Cardiff, to me, need the most work is probably midfield and defence. Yeah, I think you need a completely new midfield trio. And I think you also need a couple new centre arse as well. I would definitely recommend this guy from Schalke 04. Uh, it's Malik Fiar. He is a 19-year-old, 71-rated defender who you can get for a round evaluation, if not just a little bit further than that. We spent 4.15 mil to bring it from Gelson Kirk into Cardiff. And this guy's a solid centre arse because you'll look at his stats and you'll see he's the same rating as Aidan Flint, who he sold to International now um, but he's also 12 or 13 years younger so it's it's all about replacing those scenes with the younger players and it, they don't need to be a step up the players you sign don't need to be better than the players you're replacing they just need to be far far younger Malik is going to replace Aiden and again he's the same rating but he's again over a decade younger with far higher potential in fact I think Malik's potential is 83 which is really really solid and you know this guy will be a starting center half for well most of the years if not all the years is, you're at the Cardiff City Stadium. Yeah, really solid young German defender. And again, you can get him for close to the valuation, which is an absolute bargain for now and especially for the future as well. As I mentioned a moment ago there, I would recommend signing a whole new midfield trio of Cardiff City now. So you've got a couple of decent youngsters in there. You know, you've got Ruben Colwell, uh, for example. But I would recommend a total new midfield trio. The likes of Joe Rawls and Volks, for example, they're going to go in the first season. Marlon Pack as well. You want younger CMs for the future as well as for now as well. I would recommend three completely new central midfielders. And I think this is the guy I'd recommend more than anyone else. It's Santiago Nevada. Uh, this is a young Mexican midfielder. And let me tell you guys, this guy's an absolute steal in career mode. Seriously, 70 is his starting overall. But he's just 20 years old so very very young indeed he grows 10 ratings to 80 with dynamic potential as well this guy can definitely get into the early 80s and i love this guy because he starts off already with a really really high stamina uh, stamina stat to begin with 83 already so you know right from the very get-go this guy's got energy and it's really important to have players like that in a system like this with no wide midfielders that can run all over the pitch for the entire game and could still play midweek games because when you're managing in the football league as you'll know in the championship for example you got a 46 game season that's a that's a lot of games to squeeze into one season 46 games plus two cups as well so there's a lot of football to be played you'd have a lot of midweek games you don't want to rotate your side every single time tuesday night comes around the vader can start weekends and weekdays as well so having high stamina players is always important in a physically demanding league like the championship again i would recommend another center back as well we did sign malik but i said you probably want one or two other 
well as centre half as well. Uh, we signed this guy Alexis Duarte plus Morrison as well. And once again, we're bringing in a player that's you know the same ability as the player we're letting go of in Morrison. But again, you look at the age here; he's a decade younger than the guy we're swapping out. He's on a lower weekly wage as well. And he's got plus 10 growth, so grows to 80 overall as well. So once again, you don't need to take a big step up. Like you don't need to sell a player and then sign a guy that's like five ratings high. You don't need to do that. As long as they're just as good, if not even a little bit worse, a tiny bit worse, that's okay. Because if they're about a decade younger, they're going to have much more growth and be way more beneficial for you going forward in an RTG. The same happens here. We're signing Eric Sanchez here. This is a young Mexican midfielder, 21 years old, 71 rated, and we're giving the club Joe Rules. Now Rules is 71 rated himself but again he's around 10 years older so it's not about taking steps forward for now it's about taking steps forward for the future. If Cardiff City are one and done to have a career mode you do one season and say that was fun but now I'm going to move on to something different then you might you know you might not care about players that are young. If you're doing an RTG Youth is the key. It's as simple as that. You need to sign players that might not be better now, but are going to far exceed their predecessors. Sanchez, for example, is the same rating as Joe Rules, but he's 10 years younger with 80 potential. So, yeah, it's all about building for the future, no doubt about that. So we've got two of our three, M's, uh, three CMs there with Sanchez coming in uh, to play alongside Nevada. So we just needed one more final one. You'll see who we get in a moment. I can't wait to show you who it is as well because it's a really interesting one. And right on cue, here we go. Now, it's very rare I'll do this, but um, I have to say, sometimes when you're doing an RTG, you know, oftentimes I'll say, don't blow up your wage bill. Don't splash all your cash on one player. This is one of the exceptions. Now, this guy is Alan Sonora. He is a young American who is 22 years old and 73 rated. And let me tell you this, he's worth every single penny. And whatever you've got in the bank, throw it away to bring this guy in. Because let me tell you, he is worth it. Now, his potential is only 79. That might put you off a little bit, but... Don't be put off by that. The reason why it being is very simple. He starts off 73 rated, which means he'll be one of the highest rated players in the championship when you bring him in. He's got an abundance of creativity, but he's not bad defensively either. And this is the sort of guy who in the championship would absolutely flourish. We spend every single penny to bring him in. And again, there are very few players who I would say you should break your bank to sign. This is one of them though. Good stamina, good physicals, and his technicals are amazing. Absolutely superb for a championship team. High 70s for passing, 81 curve. He's got 84 balance, 76 vision. As a dribbler and a passer, he's always superb. But what I really like about the guy is that whilst he's listed as a playmaker... He's actually just as good, if not a little bit better, playing through the heart of the middle because his defensive stats aren't bad either. So I'll definitely bring this guy in at any cost, convert him to CM. You'll see that season grow our rating from 73 to 74. And in this midfield trio, he'd be absolutely flourishing in this kind of team. He's one of the few players I would recommend blowing up your bill to bring in because he's a brilliant player. And in, in the championship, at 74 overall, he's one of the top players in the league. He really could win you games single-handedly on your own as a very versatile player but especially when creating chances as well. So after that, uh, we sold Alex Smithies uh, to Stoke City. Bakuna did go to Andalette. And we sold Marlon Pack to Real Valladolid in Spain as well. It's always very interesting to see where our players get sold to. But Pack goes to the Segunda Division and uh, will play for Real Valladolid in Spain. And once that sale went through there for one and a quarter million pounds. After the season ticket money got added into our budget, plus what we had for those sales there, we had around three and a quarter mil to bring in one or two more players. Out of Cardiff City, I mentioned a moment ago there, we needed a total midfield trio. We wanted to improve our back line. We did that with Duarte and Malik. We got Buchanan as our new left back. They also work on a new striker as well. Cardiff have got an abundance of strikers. They got a decent one in Isaac Davis, a young talent as well, but a few of which are very average and either in their late 20s or their mid 20s are not great going forward for the future. I definitely would recommend if you've got the pennies to bring this guy in because in the championship he'll bang the goals in left, right and centre. You've seen me sign him a few times. I couldn't recommend him more. For any championship team that needs a striker, this is the guy you sign. I promise he won't let you down. Eddie Nketiah of Arsenal who has just signed an extension at the Emirates Stadium but in the game that contract extension has not been given. That means you can get him for under the valuation. We spent just 2.9 mil to get him which is an absolute steal and yes his weekly wage is very 
high. It will take a pay cut, but it will still be a big weekly contract to pay. But it will be worth every single penny. And let me tell you, he'll reward you and then some. Why is that? The guy's brilliant. 72 rated, high medium work rate, rapid, good finish, good dribbler, good ball control. And in the first season, he's got all the stats to dominate the championship. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. A 72 rated, it will be one of the higher rated strikers in the division alongside the likes of Mitrovic and Dominic Solanke, for example. But in this kind of team, I put him straight in the first 11. And believe me, in the first year, he'll be your main source of goals. Definitely worth bringing him for 2.9 mil. And the final signing I made was just a new squad midfielder. Obviously, we sold rules, we sold Volks, we sold Bakuna, we sold a lot of the CMs we had here initially. So I would recommend a new squad midfielder if you can bring one in. Once again, kind of forgot an abundance of strikers, some of which won't really offer you much going going forward. James Collins is one of those guys. He came in at the start of the season. You can't sell him, but you can swap him. We swapped into St. Pauli for, I think it was half a mil, just over half a mil, uh, plus the uh, Collins deal too. That softens the transfer fee for a new squad CM. The guy I'd pick up, Finn Ole Becker. I recommend him a lot for German RTGs. He's a 69 rated midfielder. I've had him in so many of my career modes. He's a great squad player. He never lets you down. That's why I'd recommend for Cardiff as well. In this Cardiff team, he'll probably be coming off the bench in most of the games. But he's got a solid signing overall at 69 rated. And he'll be good enough for the future to develop into a great backup, if not starting midfield, with 80 potential as well. So we changed to Norris' position to, uh, to CM, as you'll he did grow our rating 74 overall. Again, he grows really quickly as well. This guy will be in the high 70s come the end of season one. He's an absolute steal and, and definitely worth blowing your budget up for. We definitely did that, but worth every single penny, in my opinion. And as you'll see, after the deals were done, you'll see the sales here. Pack and Smithies, 30 and 31 leaving. Bakuna at 29, Flint at 32, Volks 27, Vassell at 27 as well. And of course, we swapped out the likes of Rawls and Morrison in their 30s too. When you look at the players coming in, all of which in their early 20s or teenage talents. Yet with Cardiff City, it's not about getting much better for now, but it's about getting much better for the future. We did that. We improved our team slightly to begin with, but for the future, we got far, far younger. And I mean far younger with much higher potential as well. So as per usual, we would simulate the end of the season, see if we get those reasonable objectives of finishing in mid-table in the championship and the tough one of reaching the last 16 in the FA Cup. Like I said, for season one of Cardiff, you can sneak into the playoffs, that's great. But the most important thing is you get championship stability and finish in mid-table. So as per usual, we'd simulate the end of the season and see how Cardiff will get on. And as you can see... Well, there were no playoffs, so I knew for sure we hadn't gone up or reached the playoffs, obviously. And as you'll see in the end, we finished in 10th place. So a 10th place finish for Cardiff in Season 1. To be fair as well, we were actually only two points off of playoff place. We were the top scorers in the league with 81 goals. Eddie and Ketia paying for himself. But again, we were only two points off the Sky Blues, Coventry City, in 6th place. So we were actually very, very close to a playoff place there. And a top 10 finish in Season 1 exceeds the objective the board gave to us of mid-table, or hit it, depending on how you determine that but even so that's the league objective done top scorers with 81 goals you love to see that and a 10th place finish means that league objective is here and really with this card of team that's definitely going to be your minimum aim no doubt about it you can sneak into to the playoffs that's great but mid-table definitely doable Eddie Nketiah did indeed win the golden boot like I mentioned earlier he will banging the goals in the championship left right and center he'll be your main source of goals in season one and definitely worth picking up a bargain by 2.9 mil and in the Carabao Cup we were knocked out by Steve Morrison's old team Millwall uh, in the first round not that it counts towards the objectives and the FA Cup does but like I said it's a really tough objective from the board reached the last 16 made even tougher by the fact we got drawn against Man City away at the Etihad Stadium so yeah I think you can forgive me for failing that FA Cup objective tough enough on its own merit even tougher when you got drawn against Manchester City away from home. But to be honest, again, I wouldn't I wouldn't care about it in the first season. If you're doing a Cardiff RTG, forget all about it. Just worry about finishing a mid-table in the top 10. And if you can sneak into the playoffs, that's fantastic. You don't need to go for the juggler in season one and win the title. You don't need to reach the FA Cup final. It's all about laying down the groundwork, replacing those players in their 30s, the likes of Joe Rawls and Morrison and Flint, for example, and bringing in the young talent. Because that young talent is going to develop really nicely. Santiago Nevada, for example, I just showed you there, he grew to 77 overall after position change. Sonora went up to 76 rated. So two of our three midfielders, that all three of them, because Sanchez as well grew three, sorry, five rating, sorry, to 76 overall. All three of those CMs we signed got into the mid to the high 70s. And in the championship, it's absolutely amazing. They're going to be the highest rated midfield in the championship, which means that next season you'll dominate most teams through the middle of the park. So, yeah. 
The first season isn't about winning silverware. The first season isn't even about gaining promotion. If you can do that by sneaking into the playoffs, fantastic. But really, it's just all about laying down the groundwork, bringing in those young talents that you know will fit the championship now and be really good for the future when you're eventually in the top tier, still part of your squad, assembling that core. That's exactly what we did. Cardiff, great team for a championship RTG. Many reasons why. Real, uh, real stadium, lovely, lovely kits. Very interesting history in the Vincent Tan era, no doubt about that. Do you remember when they changed their shirts to red? Very strange indeed, but even so, great rivalry with Swansea City, a unique Welsh side in the English Football League, and a decent starting budget with decent objectives and a really fun team to rebuild. Definitely recommend them. But that wouldn't say something to sign for, guys. Big fan of your fortune. Hope you have enjoyed. If you haven't, please like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for next episode. Who to sign for? I think you know who I'm going to do next very soon.